guys. Welcome back. I was just walking around my kitchen randomly with some spices. I was gonna put them away in the spice drawer and it sounded like you guys wanted to come on a spice drawer tour. So let's do it and maybe uh, when we're done we can whip up some spicy snacks. Because I'm just gonna show you how to take whatever spices you might have in your drawer and use them to like sass up any dip. Wanna go? Let's do it. This is definitely one of my favorite parts of my kitchen. It is in large part because drawers. <laughs> so I just try to like zone things out and narrow categories so it makes things easier to find, easier to put away, easier to keep track of. This top drawer is basically anything that isn't a chili. These are gonna be like whole spices, seeds, ground spices, spice mixes. So for example, I have sesame seeds here. I have za'atar, I've got cumin and anise seed. I have some mixes like, this is a spicy everything salt. I have garam masala, I have some raz al hanout. So those are blends of things along with coriander seed, oregano, cinnamon sticks, caraway seed, fennel seed, turmeric. If it's not spicy, it lives here. This is like nice to keep them on their sides because the name of the spice is gonna be obviously visible, like looking down at the front of the jar. But for things that I have relocated, I put a sticker onto the top. That's where I will kind of keep track so I can look down at the top of the lid and not have to wonder what it is. In this modern day and age, some brands are starting to label the spice on the top of the jar. Great job, spice companies. So yeah, that's top drawer, spice tour. Now we're in the land of spice, caliente. These are all chili-based spices. So those are whole chilies, those are ground chilies, and those are chili spice blends. And it's kind of amazing, you would think like, how many things can there be with dried chilies until you start organizing your spices and realize like quite a few. So these are whole dried habaneros that I got at the farmer's market. We have chili darbol over here. I've got some Spanish paprika, pimenton. I have gochugaru, which is a Korean chili. I use it all the time. I've got tajin, which is a chili blend, and I have copious amounts of it. I also have Kaltahara burlap and barrel. This is a silk chili blend with um, Cuban and black lime and coriander. I have piment de split. I have chili peen, which are really hot. I have silk chili. I have New Mexico chili powder and like your ordinary red chili flakes, crushed red pepper. Aleppo, of course, cayenne. This was like a spice blend that I put together, which is just a mix of black pepper and chili flake. Having tiny little jars is also something that I really enjoy having in my life. We have Sichuan pepper and then back there is more backups. Other whole chilies I have in the freezer. It keeps them fresher, it keeps them from drying out and getting stale. So that's the chili drawer. That's Closure. Just so satisfying. So now we've arrived at everything that doesn't belong everywhere else or is too big or small to fit anywhere or is a small jar. Backup salt is here. I have Jacobson flaky and I've got Maldone as well. I actually have quite a few spicy things. Like I have different furikakes. If you work in my world. People love to send you salt. That is why I will have like a lot of different varieties. Honestly, I wouldn't have four different kinds of flaky salt unless they were gifted. So that's like part of where that comes from. I have MSG <laughs> that um, I don't know how I ended up with three bottles plus my backup bag, but I am happy to know that I won't be running out of MSG anytime soon. This is Red Boat salt that is derived from fish sauce, which is really exciting and why haven't I opened this and used it? And then I have things that when I go to Calusian sometimes, I, I can't resist. Whole milk powder. 
And then, oh, I also have buttermilk powder, which will be similar, except it gives like a sour flavor. This was a real impulse buy. Elderflower, they're delicious. It's delicious and you can infuse it into creams and like batters. And then of course we have the trusty P-Touch, which honestly is not used with the same regularity as the masking tape and Sharpie, but we do love a P-Touch moment. This is also where I keep tiny jars. <laughs> no other way to explain or describe them, but look at this tiny jar. And when you have the jar and the thing that fits, it's just a great day. This is like a glass bottle. I don't know what came in it originally, but whatever it was, when it was empty, I couldn't say goodbye to this bottle. So I think that's it. Welcome back. <laughs> I was touring on the flooring. And now it's time to spice up your life. The dips that I have, we just made up. I'm gonna have recipes for them linked. They're really just here to like give you a vibe. You could literally use store-bought hummus. I am gonna be really upfront with you right now. I don't have a plan. We're making it up. All I know is that I want a mix of textures and I think I want something that's a little bit spicy, but I also want something colorful. I am gonna ground this with some turmeric. It's gonna give really beautiful color. It's also like earthy. It'll go with all of these. I think some sesame seeds would be really nice with that. So let's sesame. Where'd they go? Oh yeah, we'll do black and white sesame. I'm gonna use anise seed because they're a little bit smaller than fennel seed. So as far as the texture goes, it won't be like biting into such a big thing. Maybe some cumin seed as well. Oh no, mustard seed. Love mustard seed. Okay, mustard and turmeric have a similar vibe. Mustard and anise are really good together. The sesame is kind of good with everything. Mustard and cheese goes good together. Mustard and herbs, so like, yes, I feel really good about that. And then for chilies, I'm gonna take these small chili darbel. They're pretty spicy, but they're also pretty. So it'll be nice to see like some whole pepper in the sizzle. I think I would like also like another chili to go with it that isn't quite as spicy. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go with the silk chili, which is similar in heat level to Aleppo. So it's gonna be fruitier and not quite as spicy as a chili darbel. It's also going to have really beautiful color. <coughs> it's not not spicy, but it's not as spicy as our bowl. And then for the base, I'm just gonna use olive oil. I'm gonna start in a cold pan with cold oil, which will give me more control. And as the mixture is coming up to temperature, the spices will be infusing into the oil rather than everything goes in and everything has to come right out. And I think I can just grind some black pepper into that as well for another texture and another layer of like lemony, hot, peppery vibes. You're just doing, you're not thinking. Turmeric, anise seed. I just like to kind of smoosh them in my palms of my hand. It smells really amazing. Start to get a vibe. Mustard seed, sesame. So this is a very like reciprocal situation that's gonna happen in the pan. The spices getting toasted is gonna bring out their flavors and then as their flavors are drawn out, they're flavoring the oil. All right, I'm gonna place the pan over medium or medium low. I just want control. I want to give the spices a little time to extract and I wanna keep an eye on things while it comes up to temperature. As soon as I see the sesame seeds are toasted and the mustard seeds start popping, that is the signal to me that this is ready to pull before anything goes too far. There's popping, there's cracking, there's sizzling and um, snapping. The oil is super, super hot, so things are gonna keep cooking. I'm just gonna pull this off. Mm, oh my God, it smells really, really, really good. And you can see the chilies are darkened, but they're not burned. So I'm gonna add the silk chilies. Sizzle right away. They're like, have a lot of nice moisture. And then also some flaky salt, which is not really gonna dissolve in hot oil. So there'll be little texture of salt as well. And I'm just gonna spoon over, trying to get like a mix of all the spices on each. Another great thing about having a little technique like this in your arsenal is that 
spices are expensive and they don't last. Like once that jar is open and especially with ground spices, they don't have like a never ending expiration date. So having a way to use up those spices so that you use every last seed that you paid for is gonna be really satisfying when you get to the bottom of the jar. And then you get to save the jar. <laughs> like, it just keeps paying off. Stop thinking about your spices as dusty old ground up pieces of cardboard that you forgot about, don't know what to do with. And have like what is to me a really glorious little party appetizer snack attack. You just have to have your spices, some oil, a sizzle, a snazzle, and a razzle dazzle. Here's what's amazing. That mixture is delicious on every single one of these dips and every single one of the dips was also made up. So I just think that there's infinity amount of variations that you could do. And I think it would be really, really hard to f it up. I think it's almost impossible.